think the way I got started was I was just doing it on my own without it being a thing and I was going to do it no matter what, you know, but then people, Tulsans made it a thing. Like it was their idea to screenshot, not mine. On this episode of Three Points, we talk with stand-up comedian and entrepreneur Evan Hughes. What's up, everybody? I'm Nathan Gray, and you're watching Three Points. I'm here today in the Black Wall Street Liquid Lounge in downtown Tulsa, joined with one of my favorite Tulsans. He's a stand-up comedian. He's a festival organizer. He's an impresario. <laughs> the one and only Evan Hughes. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Thank you, Nathan. Well, thank you. Thank you for being here. Oh, anytime. Oh, yeah. So, we've gotten some feedback from the community. Some people got gave me some questions, suggestions. But I haven't taken all of them. Okay. You're probably glad about that. I, I am. Yeah, some of them I was like, mm, yeah. But I did take some <laughs> modified and I did combine a couple. And okay. I want to start off with a softball talking about your comedic heroes. Who oh. are your comedic heroes? And have you ever met any of them that, with a short story you'd like to sh share? I haven't, I haven't met any of the uh, Mount Rushmores, but... Um, well, it doesn't have to be a famous, famous one, but it could be somebody who met somebody at some point. Oh, new. shit. I mean... But who would be some of those comedic heroes maybe on the Mount Rushmore or, and, then, and then maybe on the local scene, perhaps? Yeah, I mean, I think I, I grew up in the, the era of, like, uh, Carlin and Stephen Wright and all those guys and Robin Williams and all them, but um, really when I was getting a little bit older than that, it was the Chris Rocks and Chappelle and that era, Bernie Mac and the Kings of Comedy... A lot of time I, I think of that as like my big, like they made the biggest impression on me at, at a certain age, you know, but really like age wise, I should, it should be more like Richard Pryor, but really when it was like Chris Rock came out with Bring the Pain is when I think I really like connected the most to stand up and I was like, oh, this is, this is a masterpiece, you know, the same way that you would like say, you know, like doggy style or, you know. Wu Tang Clan or whatever it was, it was like that was the same level of like impact to me as like uh, like those early specials, like um, you know Chappelle's first one and and the Chris Rock. Were you, would you say there's elements of Chris of Rock's show or or his style that you've taken on as your own? I mean, great artist. No, I think you can. Steal. There's nothing wrong with that. Like no, I think. We, <laughs> but I not don't think jokes. <laughs> No but any sort of things or, or isms or quirks that, 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 that you No, not at all. I think it's the same thing as like music where it's like you might be like a country band, but you only listen to metal. Mm -hmm. And it's like there's nothing really about that genre that's, you know, I don't do anything that relates to his style. But, I mean, I think you could take the, you could look at the confidence and be inspired by that. I think that's the main takeaway for people that do an entirely different style than someone else you're like, Okay, I'm never gonna do that style, mm -hmm. but I can I can look at the confidence and go, I would like that, mm -hmm. you know. So. so that's definitely played a factor in your life. You say you just kind of. Yeah, well, but I, I I got into comedy in such a weird way that it wasn't. How it, was that? How, how did you get into comedy? Well, I, I met I met a girl who was wanting to get into it, and so I got into it with her. But it but it wasn't like the kind of thing where it was like, oh, I've watched. 800 specials and now I got to do it, you know, and there's there's definitely that's a type of comic That's just watched so much that, that they've wanted to do it themselves because of how much they consumed But that wasn't me at all. I kind of got into it in a really backwards way And what was the actual first things you did? Your, your, was it well, the first, first show I ever did was Lo Looney Bin I went straight into Looney Bin and did the they had like a like a program mm -hmm. to get you on stage uh, like classes and stuff like that so um, that was the route that I took. Um, but I, I really can't tell that whole story that much because I've done it on so many podcasts. And my mom watches every one of my podcasts. And if I do the same story over and over, she'll get mad. Idea. She needs like fresh, fresh, yeah, fresh, 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 yeah, new, new material. Mm, let's see. Okay, well, <laughs> hopefully they haven't asked this too much on other podcasts. But um, how the hell did getting Evan Hughes become a thing in Tulsa? I and think like it has it spread beyond Tulsa as far as you know, or are we, I, we safely kept it? <laughs> it is a Tulsa thing. I don't. I don't think we could. It hasn't. It you know. I think it's gone like overseas a little bit, but it's still it's pr primarily a Tulsa thing. Um, I think the way it got started was I was just doing it on my own without it being a thing, and I was going to do it no matter what, you know. But then people Tulsans made it a thing. Like it was their idea to screenshot, not mine, you know. <laughs> And they came up with all the language and all the lingo. You didn't and stuff. put out a brochure. No. Tutorial. So that's why it feels. That's, 
that's why it feels so bad like taking credit for that as a bit because it's, it's like it's not my bit it's like <laughs> other people are are doing it and came up with all the words and everything so it's like i'm part of it but i'm more the recipient of it in a way you know it's like a joke about me if you don't know to to get evan hughes means evan hughes liked the hell out of all your recent posts or loved the hell out of all your recent social media posts right. and so you get this full screenshot on your your insta net notifications of all hearts from him mm. and that would that would in my what yeah. i can tell that would represent being evan hughes that's one of the they, they say blessed or there's a million there's a bunch of different things <laughs> yeah, i can't <laughs> I can't, there's so many, I mean, it's happened probably a thousand times at this point. I mean, it's so, it's so, I mean, it's been going for years. Uh, it's pre-pandemic. So that tells you, that tells you anything. Right, when people were just bored out their minds. We're, we're four years. <laughs> yeah, we're four years. Well, I mean, I was doing it even before the pandemic. Yeah. So it's, it's been going on. It's yeah. got legs. <laughs> I think it's going to become a thing. <laughs> yeah. And, uh. Kind of another, this is kind of more on the deep side of a question and the other stuff, but um, there was a good question about, about community. Um, how do we bring people together? Um, That's a good and, question. And, and building and sustaining uh, not only a sense of community, but a, a community, a real functioning. Like I had a buddy uh, refer to some of it in a simple way as the human algorithm, restoring the human algorithm. I think you need to make everybody feel represented you know like they're like when you have an event and say you have like a skateboarding element and you have a poetry element and you have a heavy metal element and you have a rap element and all these different things i feel like everybody feels good about going to that event because there's something there that's like representing them cool. so i think when and i mean that you know i do i do sta events that are primarily only stand up so that almost kind of feels like I'm going against what I'm what I'm talking about, but it's just like those events take so much to put on. They often take grant money and things like that. And you know, my stand-up events have never received grant money. Like so, Blue Will, do you talk specifically? Oh about well, Blue well, Blue, is, are okay. You about Blue Will well, I was or, well, but I you can get into specifics if you want. I mean, yeah, I could talk about Blue Will, but I wasn't thinking about Blue Will. But like, so I started stand-up in March of 2015. You know, independently of Blue Will, and have done it for. March of next year will be my like exact 10 years, I believe. Um, but um, no, all the shows that are like Evan Hughes presents uh, okay. Evan Hughes comedy night okay. or whatever, those have never received like a big, you know, like a financial backing that we like applied to receive or something like that. Like Blue Whale is George Kaiser. Mm -hmm. um, but I wasn't thinking about Blue Whale specifically when I was Blue talking Blue. about like my own, you know, 10 shows I run a month, you know, cause Blue Whale, mm -hmm. I mean, Blue Whale is a, a big, a very big deal for us. Um, uh, but it's like a once a year festival, right. but I'm, I'm sometimes doing six shows one in a week. Mm -hmm. I, some weeks it's like, I've had a show even in this last month in September, I had a show every single night of the week. Um, so that's really what I was thinking of when I was saying that, but, uh, yeah, but Blue, Blue Whale is still, you know, a cool thing. But I, I just meant, you know, like with the stand up events, I try to represent people and like, I, I like to try to have different, different ages of comics, different, different genders, different points of view, different styles. So I, I don't like to load up the show with like, everybody's a one liner comic or everybody's a story comic or everybody's a white guy or everybody's like, you know, in their thirties, you know, it's like, there should be kind of someone for everyone on the show. Cause I don't, I don't want people to go to a show and feel like, well, there wasn't really anything that spoke to me or like, I guess I just don't like comedy because I don't like this one style and that's all this show is. So I really, I, I like people to be surprised when the next comic comes up and it's like totally different than what they just saw. They're like, whoa, you know, like, oh, I didn't think they'd have anyone like this on the show, mm -hmm. you know? So at least you, I think usually people that go to the shows come away with like, even if they only like one person on it, there's always someone that they were like, I think that person gets me or that person's like speaking for me. Would you mind plugging it? Tell if it's a regular, if it's something that. Uh, well, I'm doing. I don't know when this comes out, but this Friday at the Vanguard, we have our monthly comedy night. That's usually on first Friday at 9 p.m. at the Vanguard. Um, we do have some special surprises for that show that are not on the flyer or announced. So if you do happen to get this out like tomorrow, then I hope people can come to that show because it's going to be special. In the. Um is that a, but is that a reoccurring? You said monthly, so. Yeah, it's a monthly show. It sometimes moves dates and everything, just based on like, the Vanguard is kind of 
I guess you'd say it's primarily a music venue. So we have to be flexible with like, okay, um, you know, Mighty Mighty Boston's are coming in or whatever the hell it is. And then we're going to move our comedy date to accommodate that. And so sometimes our show will be on a Thursday. Sometimes it'll be on a Saturday. Sometimes it's Friday. So. Okay. Is there a specific uh, web page or something they can people can follow to be able to? I would just follow. You know, follow the Vanguard. Um, the Vanguard's really good about just like having a constant stream of like what's coming up, what's coming up, and just follow me, uh, Evan B Hughes on Instagram, uh, Evan Hughes on Facebook. Um, I have a Twitter, Evan Hugs. Um, I have a TikTok that I don't post from, so don't follow my TikTok. <laughs> but um, yeah, um, it's if I think if you really want to find the stand up shows. They're not hidden, you know? I mean, they like anything else, I mean, I think every creator will kind of complain about the algorithm and like, oh, I put out a flyer and no one saw it. You know, that's kind of an old, boring complaint, so I don't even want to make that complaint. It's just like something everyone knows. So it's like, yeah, the shows aren't going to be like in your news feed right when you open your app when it's so easy right there for you, just giving it to you. It's like you got to scroll through ads upon ads upon ads upon the thing that they show you that's supposed to make you angry. You know, like, oh, the app knows that this pisses you off, so it shows you the thing that pisses you off to get you riled up and get you engaged and, you know, doom scrolling and stuff. So, but if you want to go to comedy shows, I mean, I'm, I'm out here in the open, you know, send me a DM, I'll send you what days are coming up and stuff like that. I do monthly shows at um, Lefties on Greenwood. Um, we do shows here sometimes. We're going to do another show here um, sometime soon here at Black Wall Street Liquid Lounge. Um, Sound Pony, Whittier Bar, uh, Heirloom uh, Rustic Ales, um, Spotlight Theater on Riverside, uh, Lowdown, uh, Belafonte. Did I already say Vanguard? I may have said that. You started with uh, the, the Racks. The Racks is like a vintage t shirt store. Oh, they're doing uh, Yeah, we do comedy shows there. Uh, Renaissance Brewing Company, um, Skyline Mansion, um, Summit Club. Um, and then I do shows. Uh, we just got hired to do a show at a birthday party. Um, so we, we do private events too. So, um, oh, we've got, there's a place called Tuli's Tacos that just opened downtown. Um, I help run a thing called Don't Tell Comedy or Don't Tell Tulsa. Sorry. It's part of the Don't Tell Comedy brand, but there's like a Don't Tell Kansas City, Don't Tell Dallas, Don't Tell Phoenix, whatever, you know, there's a Don't Tell Tulsa that I help run with, uh, my friend Shauna Blake. Awesome. Uh, we, so we do pop-up shows. Like we just did one at uh, Cherry Street Kitchen. So they're like secret secret pop-up shows basically yeah. that's great well it's true when it comes to social media it's it's a pay-to-play game now you're not there's no organic views anymore like there used to be yeah they want you to pay to to boost it or sponsored posts or whatever but it's like i'm happy to just do you know if a smaller event has 30 people um and it's in a small space that that could be a really great event um oh i also i can't believe i forgot i do a a monthly show at Chimera with Josh Fadum too. I'm just, I knew there was like a big obvious one I was forgetting, but that's actually one of my favorite shows to do. Like Josh is so amazing. Well, he's an old buddy of mine who went to school. Too. Oh, really? Yeah, he's, he's such an inspiration. If anybody's like made me feel inspired as a comic, probably Josh. Yeah, he's very creative and um, fearless as a performer, you know? Mm -hmm. Like, um, I think that was one of my problems, and every comic has that problem, I think, of like, Lo like losing your losing faith in the bit sometimes like halfway through it or <laughs> or even just being on stage where you feel like oh they're not liking this you know and watching Josh work through his set you know it's just it's just like man that's how I need to do it. it's like don't 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 let the don't let the crowd break you if you feel like it's like it's you're never in like a no lose situation and even if you are you know just have fun with it that's you know advice yeah advice yeah. Well, you know, I've put putting this pressure on you for a while, and uh, mm. and I think you know we all know that Monroe's going to win. But after Monroe wins, Tulsa Mayor, <laughs> and he gives his uh, endorsement of you, are you going to run for Tulsa Mayor? Well, um, it's kind of funny because I was thinking like I was like if we get like a really good mayor, there's no sense in like calling me the mayor anymore because we'll have a good mayor. So if Monroe gets in, then I don't need to be no, but it's about throwing, mayor of downtown. Throw, overthrowing the old guard, the old Tulsa regime. And once Monroe's done that, then we've <laughs> breaking the way for new blood with new good ideas. Who well, are I, in touch with the real Tulsa. I'm just saying. Well, I do endorse Monroe 100%. Um, yes. You know, I've endorsed him on social media and all that. And um, I think my biggest thing about politics, I've been like finally like, I feel like 
I thought it was a joke forever. And then I finally started thinking, I was like, I think people are serious. They really want me to run. <laughs> but I think the biggest thing about politics is like, you have to devote everything to it. You know what I mean? Like you can't just, because so much of politics is like, what is it? It's fundraising. So it's like if people are, if I'm fundraising or people are donating to my campaign and I'm like spending half of my energy on it and the other half of my energy I'm spending on comedy, I feel like that's just like wasting people's money and time and their effort. So I, I think I would need to 100% walk away from comedy to 100% walk into to politics to make it to where people aren't giving me their energy and I'm not giving the full energy back. So I just, I can't have this other thing going on. And I think, you know, and I, I, as I get up there in years, I mean, I don't think I want to do, I don't know if comedy will be forever. Maybe there will be a thing where I'm like, just feeling like I want to transition into politics. And if I do decide that I'll completely walk away from comedy and do a hundred percent politics. But, but I'll, I'll admit that, you know, it's right now I'm having so much fun in comedy. It's like, I'm not in a hurry to, to leave it in a, you know, it seems weird to, to say it. I mean, even if it's true, but it's like a lot of people do depend on me that I help a lot of people in terms of stand up. where it's like, if I left, um, it, it, it wouldn't be great for the scene. Kind of dropping the ball. You'd feel like. Yeah. So I would like to be able to like, uh, you know, pass on, pass that on to somebody that's going to do, you know, the work I'm doing or a large part of it before I walk away. I would like to have like a successor in, in what I'm doing. And, um, you know, right now I'm having a lot of fun with it too. I mean, it's not the kind of thing where I'm like, I'm hating it and I'm looking for something else to do. You know, it's, it's actually a really, it's kind of a boom period right now, really. That's awesome. Yeah. Well, you'd have to do it your, your own way. You wouldn't, you know, you wouldn't be able to do politics or do that public service the old fashioned way, the way they do it. You'd have to invent your own. Yeah. Way, whereas, you know, comedy and entertainment becomes a part of it or maybe a part of the the fundraising process in that sense because like you said it's a time thing yeah to saying 24 hours a day is everybody else and you yeah. still want to be yourself and the and it's a big decision to do something like that to put yourself out there in, uh, in that sort of sort of a, a vulnerable position where all of a sudden everything you say is very judged and very you know whatever you're a public you're the, the mayor so then your private yeah. life and what you used to have is never would never be the same well i don't think that part would be hard for me because i already do live publicly and i already think about everything that i say and yeah. stuff like that. and i've been like this for you know so many years now that I, I think that part wouldn't affect me it would just be the main thing of like it's like you got to knock on doors you got to make phone calls yeah. you got to send texts and it's like you can't just do that for two hours a day right. like you got to do that most of the waking hours you're awake or you didn't want to win that bad yeah. you know so i think i would I would have that conversation with myself and it's like, are you ready for that, for that level of commitment? Cause it's just, I, I just, I think like half-assing it sort of like being a popular person and half-assing the campaign. It's like, but all of your staffers and all of your campaign people aren't half-assing it, They're but you are. Yeah. yeah. So it's like, I think that would be a really shitty thing to do would just be to not give all of the energy from my life into, or as much as possible. I mean, I know you still have to have, you know, you got to take care of your family and, uh, and all that stuff. But it's like me over here doing comedy nights and getting flyers together, getting shows together. And it's like, shouldn't you be running for office? I feel like that, that would be a little uh, not good. Well, you've got a good perspective on it. Is there anything yeah. else you want to specifically talk about or plug or mention or, or uh, uh, anything we haven't talked about? Not really. Are there any other crazy questions? <laughs> about metal. I guess uh, questions about death metal and people oh. you know, and other things. I don't know the questions that to me, I didn't know what it was an inside joke. It seemed like half of them were inside jokes. So the, it so, is, so, but that is the bulk of, uh, you know, what we wanted to talk about. It, it, it kind of is. I'll wrap up on that then. So I was metal was like the first thing I think the first like scene I really like big time got into when I was young, when I was like 13, I discovered metal and, um, it's been a huge, huge fan, like grew my hair out, wore band shirts every day, you know? And so Mitch, Whenever I talk to him about metal, he's like, dude, I can't believe like you were listening to death metal in 94, you know, because I'll, it's just, it was a long time ago and it's kind of crazy to them. So I do, that's the joke there, but <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Anyway, I don't know why we need to wrap up on that. Well, I, I, lived, <laughs> I lived in a, in a metal house for about oh, like, yeah? a couple of years. Yeah. Around like, was it like metal, years. like instead of brick? Uh, and no, it was metal heads. Oh, and, you know, and okay. I was probably the only one or one or two people that weren't metal head, but. Uh, but I did learn to appreciate a lot of uh, 
groups like ASUG, uh, Botch. Uh, those were a couple that stayed. Okay. DSI, I remember these. D- I was a huge DSI fan. Uh, Cannibal Core, Cannibal Suffocation, Corp. Immolation, yeah. so Incantation. I remember, we, we woke up yeah. to this stuff. Yep. And, um, and these are the guys from like the Constant Peril, Jordan. Mm. Um, those were some of the different dudes. Yeah, out. shout out to them. Those are good guys. Absolutely. And yeah. so that was kind of, you know, but music and, and culture and fun and video and comedy was all, all lived together here in Tulsa. I mean, it, I guess it still does, but it, but it was certainly that we, we grew up in a fun heyday. Mitch is right. You know, like yeah. we were around during some really cool, cool shit. So yeah. It was, it's, it's worth mentioning. It's worth giving, giving recognition to. Yeah. I'm definitely glad I was born when I was. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad you were too, man. Bring yeah, us man. here today. Yeah, thanks for having me, man. I'm, I'm glad you were able to do this. I thank yeah. you very much. Yeah. Till next time, everybody. You've been watching three points.